more now than ever before. It seems like more people are live streaming anything online from gameplay to promotions for your small business. Any way to reach your audience live is becoming extremely popular. Anyone can go live using their phone and an internet connection, but there are a few cool ways to spice things up a bit, and we'll start with the easiest, a webcam and a computer. A great webcam to consider if you can find them online as the demand is quite high right now is the Logitech C922. It's a high quality webcam that offers 1920 by 1080 video resolution at 30 frames per second. Just place it on top of your computer and plug in the USB cord. In most cases, like on Facebook and YouTube, you can stream directly through the platform without using any extra software, and you can choose your webcam as your video source. But if you really want to take your live streams to the next level, you might want to consider using an encoding software like OBS. OBS is an encoding software that allows you to stream directly to most popular platforms like Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, and it gives you enhanced functionality like creating custom scenes where you can place different items on the screen for you to display. Just go online to obsproject.com and download the installer package based on the platform you're using, Windows or Mac. Once you get OBS installed, you'll need to configure some of the settings to be able to stream to the platform of your choice. Now, OBS comes with an auto configuration wizard that detects the best settings for OBS based on your internet connection and your hardware. Just go to tools and click auto configuration wizard. The best looking stream will be at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and choose 30 or 60 frames, but prefer 60 when possible. For your stream key, Within the platform you're going to stream to, it will provide you a key that you can use to insert an encoding software like OBS. Refer to your platform stream settings page to be able to identify where your stream key is located. Okay, now that OBS is set up with the best possible connection for your internet speed and your hardware, let's start setting up our scenes. By default within OBS, you will see a scenes column, a sources column, and an audio mixer column scene transitions and controls as well. But we're gonna take a look at the sources so that we can add our webcam. All you have to do to add your webcam is hit the plus sign. Choose video capture device. We will rename this webcam and hit okay. Under the device dropdown, let's choose C922 Pro Stream Webcam. Now within OBS, we can see that our webcam is now filling the screen, but the audio is coming from our computer. We can change that. In the audio mixer panel, we can click the cog, go to properties, and where it says built-in microphone, let's change that to C922 ProStream webcam. Okay, so you're gonna notice a difference in how it sounds, and admittedly, the audio coming from the Logitech webcam isn't really the greatest. Also keep in mind that with the webcam, you can't really configure the video settings through OBS. However, there is an auxiliary software that comes with Logitech products called G-Hub. If you download and install G-Hub, it will allow you to change the settings of your webcam, like the brightness, exposure, saturation, to really help you dial in the look that you're going for. So for a simple setup using just a webcam, this is what you might expect to see and hear on your stream. If you're ready to go live, all you have to do is go into the control section and hit start streaming. At this point, Given your settings are correct and your stream key is inserted properly, once you hit start streaming, you'll begin to go live on that platform. And this is great, but we can do so much more. Let's start by adding a much higher quality video source. We can really change things up and increase the production quality of our streams by adding a higher quality video source that we can get from something like a DSLR. Most modern DSLRs do have the availability and outputs to take an HDMI signal to another device. Something to keep in mind, most cameras might output the info display, such as your camera settings, shutter speed, ISO, the whole HUD that you see on the back of your camera. Within the settings of each individual camera, you should be able to turn the info display off, so that way it's outputting a clean HDMI video feed. You'll also need an HDMI cable that will connect to your camera's HDMI output, as well as an Elgato cam link. You also need a way to mount your camera, so I use this little Manfrotto Pixie tripod that allows me to set the camera directly in front of me on the table. 
So I'll connect one end of my HDMI cable into the camera and the other into the cam link and insert that into a USB port. Something to consider is how to power this camera. Most DSLRs use battery power, so you might need to get an AC or DC adapter that will constantly power this camera so you don't have to worry about it dying in the middle of your live stream. So we've connected the DSLR to the cam link and the cam link into our computer. Let's change the settings in OBS to show us this video feed. So we'll double click on webcam, choose cam link in the drop down, and you can see our video feed has changed, but the audio still really hasn't. Click OK. Under the audio mixer, we're going to change the properties to use cam. Now we're using the video and audio that is coming through the cam link from our DSLR. At this point, I'll take off the webcam because, well, we're not going to use that. And let's consider an upgraded audio option. This is the Blue Yeti microphone. It's a pretty cost effective microphone and it attaches to your computer via USB. It comes in at around $150 and is a great substitute for using onboard microphones, which as you can tell, aren't really that great. We'll just take the USB cable and plug it into our computer. Just like before, we'll go into the audio mixer, click the gear, go to properties, and change the selection to Yeti stereo microphone. Okay, now we're getting audio from the Yeti and video from our DSLR. This is a much better audio quality setup, and you can always adjust the volume uh, with the slider to increase or decrease the gain. The Yeti itself has a volume knob or a gain knob so you can do that independently of each other. One of the biggest drawbacks to the Yeti microphone having it on this little stand mount is that any bumps or movements that you make on the tabletop are going to be heard through your microphone. You can get a road style boom arm to mount your microphone to and that will help get it off the table so that you won't hear a lot of that other noise. Now this is a great audio setup, but we can go even further with a higher quality microphone. One great and pretty cost effective option for microphones is the Audio-Technica 2020. This is a XLR condenser microphone and it really is a great microphone for the price. However, an XLR microphone cannot plug straight into your computer so you're gonna need something called a USB interface. And what I recommend is called the Focusrite 2i2 USB audio interface. Essentially what this does is it has an XLR slash quarter inch input times two that allows you to plug an XLR mic into the unit and send the audio to your computer via USB. So all we have to do is plug in the USB cable to our USB interface, connect it to our computer, connect the XLR end of our microphone into the input on the focus right. So just as we've done before, we'll go to the audio mixer section, click the wheel, go to properties, and we can change it from cam link to Scarlett 2i2 USB. And as you can tell now, it's a very different audio experience a much higher quality audio than we can get from onboard microphones, whether it's through the DSLR or our webcam. And if we make it full screen, you can really tell the difference between a webcam with onboard audio and a DSLR using cam link, a USB audio interface, and a much more professional microphone. Okay, I wanna take this whole setup just a little bit farther and show you what it looks like with two cameras. This one is just a Sony RX100 Mark III, which has an HDMI output. So I'm gonna mount this overhead and using something like a Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, we can convert HDMI or SDI into Thunderbolt because I'm using a MacBook Pro. Would highly recommend a cam link instead, but I just don't have one. And the supply for those is quite limited right now. So once we get this connected, we can now go into OBS and in the sources panel, we'll hit the plus sign. We'll select another video capture device. We'll name this overhead and the device will be the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. So now we have our main DSLR and an overhead view all at the same time. And this is great for if you wanted to show you talking to camera, but also 
showing from above what you're doing on your table surface. So let's make a scene specifically for the overhead camera. So I'm just going to take that away. In the scenes, I'm going to hit plus. We'll call this overhead scene. You won't see it if I add it because it'll take us away from the display capture. But in the overhead scene, in sources, you want to hit the plus sign, go to video capture device, and we'll add the new overhead angle. You can always right click, hit transform, go fit to screen. We can have specific scenes, one scene for uh, just the webcam. We can have a separate scene for an overhead shot. And in OBS, if you just click a different scene, it will cut to that, keeping the audio that you've set in your settings, and it looks and sounds amazing. So for instance, a nice looking talking head scene like this, let's say we're describing something that we're gonna do, we're gonna fix something, or we're gonna show our audience how to make you know, face masks, or whatever, we can cut to by clicking on overhead, we can cut to an overhead view of what we're doing on our surface, explain all that to our, our people, we can go back to, back to full screen, and it's all seamless. Okay, what if we don't have a, a DSLR, but we have a GoPro and one of those web cameras? We could take a, a little clamp like this, put our GoPro inside, boop. And there you have it. We have a, a GoPro as our main camera. And we can go overhead with this camera and back to our GoPro. For those of you who saw the uh, how to stream using GoPro, here's the example. Oh, something to keep in mind when you're using a GoPro as a webcam, you need to turn off the stabilization. With stabilization on, the GoPro introduces a serious lag. So now we have two cameras set up, pro audio, everything looks great, sounds great. I wanna show you one more thing before we finish, and that is a tool that will help you scene switch between all these devices without having to look at your computer. This is called a Stream Deck. It's made by Elgato. It's a really cool tactile, like, it's just a pad of buttons. But what you can do with it is really, really cool. It works like this. Once you plug your Stream Deck into your computer, you, you'll see it come to life, but we have to set it up, right? Within the Stream Deck software, we want to use it to switch between scenes. Now you can do tons of other things, including soundboards, you could play media files. You can use the Stream Deck to start and stop the recording or streaming through OBS. It really can do a lot of cool stuff, but we're just going to show you scene switching. So we'll take scene from the OBS studio part. We're going to title this desktop from the untitled collection, which is the live scene. And you can see our scenes are labeled in OBS, live scene, overhead, full screen. Let's bring in a new one, call this one camera. That one is our full screen. And we'll bring in our other scene. I'll label this overhead and choose overhead scene. And now, all we have to do is close this software. You can see that our buttons are already here. And all you have to do is tap it. We could switch right over to a full screen. Whoa, glitchy. We could press the button, switch right over to our stream deck or show our desktop. It really is a super cool device that will help you in your productions. It's almost like having a control panel right at your fingertips. So that's quite a bit to unpack and I'm sure you might have to go back throughout the video and watch different parts of it. I will leave links in the description to all the things that I talked about here so that you guys can find them easily. Now I know you can go live on your phone and that's great, but if you really want to impress people, and that is the name of the game right now, with everybody putting more live content online, you really need to find a way to help stand out. If you can stop people from scrolling by having an impressive looking stream it's gonna make the difference between getting seen or not. You can do a lot of really cool things with OBS and having different input capture devices. You could even take a master out from a full 16 track board with a band performing into your USB audio interface and have a camera set up and make an amazing live music performance. The options really are limitless 
and you can create some really great looking live streams by using some of this stuff mentioned in this video. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and on your way past the subscribe button, don't forget to ring the bell. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section below and that's gonna be it for us today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.